Hello, this is my third and final short video on simple linear regression. In the first short video, I explained the motivation for a regression study. In the second, I used Excel to show how to run a regression. I also gave some interpretation of the output. In this third presentation, I'm going to show how the key statistics in the regression output are calculated. So proceeding, we used this two variable data set to obtain the regression result shown right here. There are three sections of regression output. At the top, we find some descriptive statistics. The middle section here under ANOVA shows analysis of the two aspects of variation associated with the dependent variable Y in this regression. They include the variation explained by Y's regression relationship with X right here and the residual variation that's unaccounted for by that relationship. The bottom section right here shows estimates of the regression coefficients which would be B0 and B1 and their corresponding test statistics right here. So the best way to explain the calculations is to start from the bottom of this output and then we're going to work um, uh, we're going to work our way up. So to begin, first off, we find the coefficient estimates right here. The more important of the two, of course, is B1 because that's the measure of the impact that X has on Y. And we find that this impact is negative in that when X changes, Y is going to change, but in the contrary direction. By how much? By 1.77% uh, of that amount of change in X. How do we know that these coefficients are statistically significant? Well, right next door, we find their corresponding standard errors. If you divide the coefficient by the standard error, you get the t-statistic. This t-value for B1, does it mean that the impact that X has on Y is statistically significant? Based on this result, the answer is yes. And the reason is because the p-value of 0 0.0013 is less than 5%, which is the conventional level of significance with which we test hypotheses. So now proceeding to the middle section, the actually the most important section, we find the two aspects of variation. For regression, the degrees of freedom associated with that is k minus 1, where k, as I explained here, is the number of parameters that are being estimated, and that's b0 and b1, b0 and b1. So k is 2. 2 minus 1 leaves you with 1. For residual, it's n minus k, where n is the sample size, which is 8, as you can see here, number of observations. So 8 minus 2 leaves you with 6. Total degrees of freedom is always going to be the sample size minus 1, which is 8 minus 1, that's 7. Now, there are three measures of variation um, in terms of the metrics we use for each of these two aspects of variation, sum of squares, mean square error. There's going to be a third one for the residual variation. So to start with, sum of squares regression is what you see right here. It's a basic measure of explained variation in the regression model. If you divide this sum of squares regression by the degrees of freedom, you're still going to get the same number of 134.72. For the residual, sum of squares residual is again the basic measure of the unexplained variation or if you like we call it sum of squares error SSE of 25.28 now if you divide this sum of squares error by the corresponding degrees of freedom of 6 you find the mean square error these are explained in this annotation up here most importantly is the F statistic because this is what's going to tell us if the regression in general is significant. If you divide the mean square regression by the mean square error, you find the F statistic and that's what you see explained right up here.
Based on this F value, can we tell if the regression is statistically significant? The answer is absolutely yes, because look at the p-value right next to it. It's 0 0.0013. Again, because this is less than 5%, you'd have to reject the null hypothesis of no relationship and conclude that a statistically significant regression relationship exists. That's a mouthful right there. But yes, this is significant. By the way, alternatively, you could also compare this F critical value, the, sorry, this calculated F value to the critical value in the, uh, on the F, F table based on one degree of freedom in the numerator and six degrees of freedom in the denominator. And you're going to find that your conclusion would be the same as when you compare B value to alpha, as I show here. Oh, one final thing real quick right up here. In a two-variable model, meaning in a simple linear regression as you have here, if you reject the null hypothesis based on f, you're also going to do so based on t for the slope coefficient. And you're also going to find that their p-values are going to be identical, even though the test statistics are different, this being f and this other one is t. So now, wrapping this up, going to the top section, we find some descriptive statistics. At the very top is the correlation coefficient. Not sure why Excel calls it multiple R. But correlation coefficient is a descriptive statistic that measures the degree of association between two variables and ranges from negative 1 to positive 1. If we find a value of positive 1, it means the two variables x and y are perfectly positively correlated, meaning they move in tandem up or down. If it's negative 1, it means they are perfectly negatively correlated, meaning that, yes, they change by the same degree, but in the opposite directions. If R is 0, then the movement in one has none to do with the movement in the other. In this example, we find that the correlation coefficient here is about 0.92, so which is pretty close to 1, telling us that these two variables, y and x, move a whole lot in the same direction. Next to it is the coefficient of determination, which is actually the square of the correlation coefficient when dealing with a simple linear regression. So you can simply square this number and you're going to get this 0.842 which tells us that about 84% of the variation in y has been explained by its relationship with x. So that's a lot, since this statistic ranges from 0 to 1. One would be that 100% of the variation in y has been explained, 0 meaning that nothing has been explained. So the larger this number is, the more it tends toward 1, the more we're happy, given in so far as I should say that the regression relationship is statistically significant. Do not base your regression conclusion on R squared though. You got to base it on F because F tells you if the relationship is significant. If this says it is not significant, it doesn't matter what R squared is. If this says there it is significant, it doesn't matter if you're unhappy with the value of your R square. If it's a low number in your judgment, it still doesn't nullify the fact that a regression relationship exists. It's a case where you can have you can call someone your friend, there is a relationship there, but you don't really hang out a whole lot, so you have a low R square <laughs> kind of uh, so to speak. Now, you can ignore adjusted R square in the case of a simple linear regression. This is something you'll want to deal with when you study multiple regression. But standard error of the estimates is the third measure of unexplained variation. The first being sum of squares error. The second being mean square error, which is when you divide the sum of squares error by its degrees of freedom. So mean square error, therefore, is going to be like a variance measure. If you take the square roots of this 4.21, you're going to find the standard error, which is like a standard deviation and I show you the calculation here. This is an absolute measure. It's so you can say the larger this number is, the more unexplained variation you have in a regression model, but it's not a relative number. So 
Actually, this wraps up this uh, short presentation. For some of you, watching these three minute videos might be a sufficient primer on simple linear regression. However, for a detailed understanding of regression analysis, I invite you to visit my YouTube channel and watch my complete regression videos. This is Pat Obi at Purdue University Northwest.